What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games. Okay, this is not an indie game. This is Sengoku Dynasty and I just couldn't keep my hands off of it because I happen to be a big fan of the Sengoku period. If you don't know when the Sengoku period was in Japan, it's kind of like the middle 1500s and it's defined by the arrival of the flintlock gun, the Tanegashima. And so anyways, this is a time period that I'm actually a really big fan of, and so I kind of had to dive in, I had to check it out, we've got to do some first impressions. If you've never seen any of the Dynasty games before, 50% of them you should probably thank your lucky stars that you haven't seen before, because like, this is all Toplitz stuff. If you don't know who Toplitz is, Toplitz is a producer, and their games are wildly all over the place. They hit it big with Medieval Dynasty, Everybody loved it, never since they've been trying to kind of bore out that niche with new Dynasty games. Most of them end up being terrible. Today we're going to take a first impressions look at Sengoku Dynasty and try to figure out whether or not it's a game you wanted to purchase for yourself. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. Fair warning, this game is in early access. For all my people out there that absolutely refuse to play anything in early access, on top of that, if you wanted to hang out with me live on any given day of the week, I will be trying to stream this on Sunday. I'm not exactly sure if I will, though, because there have been kind of some chunky performance issues with this game on my rig. And so I'm going to investigate a little bit further, but on Sunday, California time, I should be streaming this game in the afternoon if you wanted to check it out further. Now, what is the storyline so far in this game? It sounds like, so Sengoku period in Japan was basically feudal warfare between a bunch of different daimyo, uh, daimyos. This is like when uh, Oda Nobunaga was alive, effectively. This is his time period. And it's when social mobility was changing in Japan. Uh, Bushido was beginning to falter. So it wasn't dying yet, but the Sengoku period is when Bushido started to stumble a little bit. And it started to be possible for, like, a peasant to become something more than a peasant. It was a time period where Westerners were coming to Japan for the first time uh, and basically trying to capitalize on the chaos over here to make loads and loads of money. Uh, mostly Portuguese traders, but also some other ones. And that's how kind of, like, flintlock rifles and whatnot got here during the Sengoku period. But anyways, this is a time of strife. This is a time of chaos. This is a time of feudalism. But it's also a time of opportunity. Our characters are running from that war in Japan where everybody is slaughtering one another. And we've landed on an island called the Peasant Kingdom, where we're trying to make our own way without feudal lords breathing down our necks. And so I've arrived at this little village. It looks pretty run down, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, this village is looking a little bit rough right now. It's looking a little bit shanty-like. But I'm going to do my best. We're going to play about 30 minutes of the game, and hopefully I'll be able to tell you whether or not it's worth your time. The game's getting pummeled a little bit on Steam right now. I purposefully have not looked at any of those reviews because I wanted things to come up naturally, and I did not want them to flavor my video here. So we'll see what we come across. Uh, Toshichi, my friend and I almost died in a wreck. Can we settle here? Uh, I saw that was you. I saw you cared for your friend. It was touching, and I got to say, I misjudged you. You were judging me? Why? I'm glad to welcome you here, but if it was up to oh, if it were up to me, but it isn't. The settlers need per permission from the village council. Okay. All right, so talking to this nerd for a little bit, what we found out is that we are going to have to rebuild. There's some kind of bell shrine that used to exist here. We can't move into the village unless we convince, like, the elders or, like, the priests or something. And so they want me to rebuild some kind of, like, bell tower thing. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we have to build an adze first, though. So we've got... There it is right there. So i got to go find some sticks. If you've ever played Medieval Dynasty, the opening to this game is largely going to be the same. I found that Medieval Dynasty was a very, very slow game. Don't get me wrong. I really like Medieval Dynasty. I think it's a great game. It's got bad combat, but like everything else about it, I spent a lot of hours in, like a lot, a lot of hours. However, it's slow. Uh, that's one thing you're going to find, I think, with most of the Dynasty games, is that like for the first couple years of gameplay, like big chunks of gameplay, you're not really going to get to the interesting parts of the game. That was very true with Medieval Dynasty. I don't know if it's going to be true with this one, but judging from the way they're tutorializing, I'm going to guess probably going that same way. I've got ads, so there you go. Like everything else on the internet, we've got ads. Now we need to chop down some trees. We need to apparently fiddle around with some logs, I guess, with our ads. So I guess I'll go ahead and do that so that we can rebuild the bell thing. 
Let's see this tree chopping animation. How's it look? I apologize, but I always play all of these Dynasty games in first person. I'm not a bit. I feel like third person ruins these games. I don't like playing them that way. I can't get immersed. Chopping animation looks and feels okay. Okay, so we got to split the log apart and then one tap right there and it knocks all the... Okay, so it debarks it. Gotcha. So we smack that guy right there and let's take a look at this ads animation. Uh, not the best. I, I would have preferred that it showed something a little bit more historical, like you scraping the log or something like that. But like, it's not that huge of a deal, I guess, but it does kind of disappear in sort of like a cheap way. Taking a look at the game map, we've actually got a pretty big map out here. If they're planning on actually filling all this out with content during the early access period, they've got their work cut out for them. I love that they went with like the watercolors and whatnot along the edges of the ocean too. Really good looking stuff right there, but that's a pretty chunky map right there. That's quite enormous, but then again, I guess Medieval Dynasty had a pretty big map too. We'll have to wait and see. I've seen from a number of people talking about it that they've said there's like 10 hours of content here in the first early access. I can't really verify that. I'm a first impressions channel. We hit it from the ground running in the same way like an end user would with zero research and we kind of just run on into it. There we go, after looking around. So the game said that I had to build a bell tower after we got those 20 planks all taken care of. But it didn't indicate where inside the menu any of the bell tower stuff was going to be. It does. Can I rotate from here? It doesn't look like I can actually rotate from here. If you right click while you've got your hammer out, you got to like track it down. It's right here on this left hand side. But each one of these like unnests into like 10 more buildings. So like a little marking next to it that like blinks or does kind of like an undulating light animation next to it to indicate that was what you're supposed to do. Would have saved me probably about four or five minutes going through menus and whatnot. All right, we'll put that right there. Bell tower. Let's go ahead and lock it on in. It doesn't look like I can rotate from the perspective that I'm currently in. We do have stamina that we need to babysit in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Apparently it needs one more log and it's deeply upset with me that I didn't think to begin with one more log. Let's go ahead and chop down a tree real fast. Although this stone ax is about to break. The stone ax is not in, yeah, hmm. It's okay though, I've got the stuff on me to make a new one, but Will it put it back? Ah, oh, that's a basic quality of life thing. Uh, so when you recraft a tool that you've already possessed and you've already had slotted into a number slot over here, you want it to automatically go back into the UI when the player crafts it so that they don't have to, like, click and drag it back on in here. Like, basically everything in a game should really be in service to saving as many clicks as possible. That's, like, the definition of a well-designed UI is does that UI minimize the amount of clicking that someone has to do? At least that's how I judge a UI, is like, did it save me three or four clicks where it didn't need to, but it realized that it could. And that tends to be a thing that I look for in these sorts of games. Uh, your little ghosts, they do not appear uh, unless you have your hammer out, so there you go. We have founded a village. That's a pretty chunky bell right there, dude. Oh, it's got the mark of the emperor on it. It's got like a little chrysanthemum right there. Oh, it looks like I can actually break down these houses over here too. So we can clear the roughage of the village that's been annihilated. That's kind of sick. I actually like that. I do wish, like, as I'm talking to these little NPCs and whatnot, they're kind of stiff. Like, they don't really have, like, voice lines. They don't really do little things like, ah, oh. Like, as you're going through the dialogue options, uh, the text is very, very simple when you're talking to people. And so anyways, they don't emote or like move their bodies at all along with the lines that they're saying. These are all like modern things that I expect to see from a game that's commanding kind of like a double A price. Let's see if we can, they want me to build a house now. So that's a shed. There's the small house right there. It's a couple menus deep, but we got it. Uh, buildings are the backbone of the village. All right, well, that's fine. That's whatever. Uh, so, ah, we can rotate this one. I guess I must have, did I not see it with the bell or did the bell not have the option? I don't know. Either way, I'm going to build my house right in the center of town because obviously I am the main character. Therefore, I should be right near the bell tower that I built and everybody else can just figure out where it is that they want to be. But the bell tower is in front of my house because I am an important dignitary. I mean, honestly, I think an even better function, I'm about to break another ax here and I was thinking about it, is like an even better quality of life thing is that like when you break anything that's in a hot slot, if you have the stuff in your inventory, it should just automatically craft another one. 
Like, it should basically just, the next time you click or whatever, it should bang out another one and then put it into that slot if you've got the things inside your inventory. That would save a whole bunch of time. A mess of time. I have collected log, for I am all that is frontier man. And now, we will build our house, maybe. Maybe I'll move it a little bit. I kind of like push this back over this way. Yeah, I'm going to move it a little bit. There we go. We'll put it over here. Huh. Collision character animal item with structure. Clear the ghost area to deliver resources. Uh, Is it maybe me being in there? It is. You can't build the building while you're standing on top of it. I was over here like being like, oh, there's no buildings or plants or anything else while my dumb ass was standing in the middle of it. It looks like we need a whole bunch of planks for that right there. Luckily, I planked like it was 2007. So like, is that when planking was popular? I don't know, dude. So much time has gone past. It's so difficult to keep track of all these little trends. It looks like we build section by section right here, actually, interestingly enough. But it looks to me like the woodworking is coming together. So there's the beginnings of the house. I went ahead and not look at the framing on those windows right there. Look at that. Just doing a great job, man. Those windows. I live in Skeeter country, man. I live in I live in marshland. Like endless bull rushes and like standing water. And those windows right there, man. Ugh, I can already feel the mosquitoes itching while I'm trying to sleep. No, my wood dude, come on, my hammer. So like whose idea was it to give the tools in this game like enough durability to be swung like twice we got we got to get on top of that here now i will build the roof it doesn't look like it incrementally builds i'm gonna need another log i can get the planks in here but we are very light on logs in addition apparently building uses up stamina they may want to get rid of that so i'm okay with like chopping logs and chopping trees and whatnot taking stamina but uh, building taking stamina if you got to click the building 450 times and every single time you click it takes up like 10% of your stamina then you got to stop and you got like that little gap on the in-between it's just like a smoothness of play thing for me I think they could also possibly get away with these stone tools right here uh, maybe think about, like, doubling the amount of durability the stone tools have. They break very quickly. Like, I'm still in the beginning portions of the game doing, like, the first couple missions. And I think I've gone through, like, five axes now. I guess the sun has decided to clunk out on me before I could get this all done. So let's just see if we can finish this up and maybe build essential furniture. So we need planks right here in order to build a campfire. And then we need straw in order to make the world's most Dickensian sleeping spot. All right. Hey, 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 what are you doing inside my house, lady? Scavenger? You better get up out of here. You better, you better leave, baby. This is not a scavenging place. You better bounce along. I just built this place with the sweat of my own hands. Look at that. I stacked rocks on the roof. I don't, I don't know what those rocks are accomplishing. Those are load-bearing, structurally integral rocks. For me and my future family that doesn't exist just yet. I built my campfire. Now I'm sitting inside in the light because I'm scared because it's dark out there. And I thought maybe an Oni might get me. I need to gather straw, but unfortunately I find myself in a situation where it's too dark for my eyeballs to work. So... Alright, so what I did was I just built a tent next to my house because I can't sleep in my house until I have a bedroll. And I spent the better part of the night wandering around trying to figure out where I get straw. But that's when I used my big boy brain and I looked at the tooltip over here. And it says that it can be dried into straw. So I think it just takes time. Like it says fresh time over here. And so I think we probably just have to wait for it maybe? I found straw, so it took me a minute to find it here and figure out how to dry straw. I thought so, like, it's the next day, by the way. My house is over there. It's the only one that doesn't look extra crispy. Uh, this is my house over here. I made a tent so that I could sleep through the night because I figured if I was going to go find straw, I would need the use of my utility eyeballs. But now that I've woken up in the morning with a fresh brain, you can actually just make straw over here. 
So I'm gonna mash out the straw real fast. So now that I've got all of my straw made, we can actually finish off this bedroll. And we're gonna do that how weavers have done for centuries in the Sengoku period. We're going to do that by hammering the floor as hard as we can with a mallet. <laughs> there you go. This is how a bedroll is made. Uh, it does look like they've changed things up a little bit from the Medieval Dynasty game. So inside the building, it looks like there's a grid. Uh, like I can move this around as you see right there. And it looks like they've got like an interior grid now that exists inside your house. And so it does look like we're going to be able to customize a little bit. Like when Medieval Dynasty came out, you can't customize the interior of your buildings. They were all prefabs. So like you would build the building and it would have a pre-built campfire and it would have a pre-built storage and a pre-built bed and like a pre-built workbench. And they were all in the same spot every single time. In this game, it looks like they've given you a little bit of wiggle room. So you make the outside structure and then everything else. Can I move the hearth? Oh yeah, dude, move the hearth over to there then. I want the hearth. I mean, putting it up against the wall, which is made out of wood is probably a terrible idea, but we're inside video game fantasy land. Don't worry about it. It's not gonna catch fire now that we've completed our house let's go ahead and go talk to like tosh 2.0 so after talking to tosh over here we've got to start recruiting people and uh, so i think this is going to go about the same as it did in medieval dynasty maybe there's going to be like a quest involved for a lot of it but i've got to go around and like these random people you see just shuffling around all over the place basically i need to talk to them and be like hey you guys want to be my friend you want to be on my kickball team and then once I ask them if they want to be on my kickball team, maybe it'll be okay. But there was a lady, so I washed up on these shores. There was a lady on a beach way back over here that's like my bestest homegirl. We're going to go talk to her real fast and see if she wants to join because chances are she probably has the least um, imposing quest since I saved her life. All right, lady. I'm going to need you. Oh, she got the she got the vest with the fur with the fur whole club. It was looking at her. Uh, Aka, well, I mean, hold on. I don't want to look at your feet while I talk to you. There we go. I'll talk to you this way. I have good news. The village is reborn. I built a single hut. Unbelievable. It makes me happy. Tell me where my house is and I will get to work. Cool, 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 cool. So I guess I'll see you over there. I got to reach Dynasty Legend 5. Yeah, there's like a Dynasty page over here. So basically what it looks like to me is that there's like recruitment. It looks like there are employment. And then apparently all over the island, there's like these big civic projects like bridges or like temples or like things like that that you're going to build that are going to level up your dynasty. I have no idea if the dynasty is just an arbitrary way to stop the player from advancing until they've built like a, a certain amount of things. And now that I take a look, it does appear as though they do have those RPG aspects on in here, although it looks like they're kind of limited for right now. We've got like the way of the leader, the way of the craftsman, the way of the warrior, and the way of the monk. Okay, so I've got to discover places of power and things, but it does look like we get perks, so buying prices are better. You are something of a vendor yourself. By haggling and touting goods, you get better prices when selling. Recipe crafting times down. Cutting trees is second nature. Uh, yeah, let's go with chop down trees for for less effort. That sounds really, really good to me. In fact, that sounds like the kind of thing that I can make use of. Over here, I've gone ahead and I've spent the afternoon and the morning kind of just clearing out all these wrecked houses. I was hoping it would help out with performance, and in fact, I think it is. So I think that's my biggest complaint so far with the game, is that actually this feels kind of similar to the Medieval Dynasty early access it's rough there's basically zero quality of life that exists i think the amount of durability on the tools needs to be bumped up pretty considerably uh, by maybe like doubled or so but all of that is stuff that i can deal with in the name of progression the thing that i think has been the most obvious this entire time is that i don't think i've had better than 45 frames the entire time i'm playing this game my computer is by no means brand new, but I do have a 2080 RTX. I do have a very nice processor from that same generation. I've got 32 gigs of memory. And so for a game that looks kind of like a PS4 game, I feel like we should be getting better performance than this. I've got other games on my hard drive like right now that are much, much, much better looking than this game, but they aren't lagging out as hard as this one does. And so that would be the one thing that I think they probably need to tackle first. 
is they need to kind of like sit down and they need to optimize. Uh, I think that's probably one of the main reasons why, I mean, their reviews are not looking great on Steam right now. They're hovering around like 60% positive, which is pretty rough. I would actually say it's probably the performance because everything else here... I'm just taking a guess. Like I said, I didn't look at the reviews because I didn't want them to, like, uh, taint my first observations of the game uh, with things that I would go looking for beforehand. But as I said, performance is the thing that I would ding this game on. Uh, you need your, your first early access needs to be sleek. It needs to be, it doesn't need to be feature complete, but what it does need to be is it needs to be running well, smoothly. Uh, so that people can get into the experience. And as it feels right now, the game feels very chunky. There was also, I mean, even when I spawned in on the beach when there was no objects around or anything else that were, it was running at 60 frames then. When I was on the beach, there was still like a slidiness to the movement. And so I think the slidiness of the movement along with the fact that the game's got kind of chunky performance for me right now, uh, definitely not 60 frames for sure. I think makes it feel kind of weird to play and makes it feel almost lower quality than it actually is. So there is a menu over here that allows us to assign people to our little houses. I thought I was building this place for me. Uh, turns out could not be further from the truth. Apparently I am the world's most ardent humanitarian because I'm over here solving a real estate crisis for everybody but myself. I'm going through and like knocking out houses for refugees. And so we've got our dynasty over here. And then what you're going to do is uh, you've got to go to, like, your village. I named it No Rich Allowed because we're running from the lords. And you got to find Aiko over here. And then once you find her, you click on her, and then you assign her to a house inside of a home. I don't know. Apparently, she's going to be angry next season. She wants a job. She can be the cook. There we go. She is now the cook. I would say probably cook the gobo. I don't know what gobos are. But you can cook a de gobos, I guess. I think I have some of them, actually. I think I... I'm pretty sure I have a bunch of gobos in here somewhere. I remember picking something called gobo at some point. Yeah, there it is right there. We've got our little gobo plant right there. So it looks like a food storage is going to be necessary. Let's take a look at our hammer. And let's figure out the storage. So there's our food storage right there. Oh, wow, that's a that's a building right there. It kind of looks more fancy than a building that's just for food, doesn't it? It kind of seems like the kind of thing. I mean, it looks almost ceremonial. We will store the ceremonial gobos. It looks like you can place over the top of grass, I guess. I'll put it right there behind my house, I suppose. It's really going to mess up the back windows over here, though. Our view is not going to be great. It looks like we have most of the stuff we're going to need. I need more straw, I need more rocks, and I need more logs. Okay, let me go get on that. Can I tell you, like, a small thing that I really like about this game, though, that I really, really hated about Medieval Dynasty? I'm just gathering for our storage still, but a thought came to mind. I was like, dude, I'm carrying around, like, a lot of logs right now. How come I'm not, like, encumbered or anything? Uh, they made the best decision ever with this title to get rid of the weight system entirely which I fully support. One of the most, like, I love Medieval Dynasty, but I swear to God, one of the most obnoxious things that I've ever seen in my life was the weight system in Medieval Dynasty. Like, I hated it so much. Like, I just, I don't believe in weight systems or limited inventories, all right? I believe that in every video game, you should be able to carry all the stuff all the time, no matter what. It's a video game. Let's just all forestall our disbelief, you know what I mean? Like, let's just accept that we can carry as much stuff as possible in this fantasy made-up digital universe. I think I... I believe that I have all of the things for our big storage building over here. So I'm gonna go for it. Oh, wow, it's going up by, like, 1%. I'm gonna need a new hammer, aren't I? So close. Ooh, with like one swing left in my hammer, we got it done. Uh, so we've got some mandatory furniture inside of here. And it looks like... Ah, there it is. Perfect. I'm about to build another one, huh? All right, build another one. I'm just... You know what? I'm not going to complain. I thought we weren't going to have enough hammer for building one building. Uh, 
but we we had enough for one building. I still I still think the durability on all these tools should be much higher. I also in the Sengoku period don't know why we're using like caveman tools for everything. There should be like a flood of Western iron and steel coming into Japan during this time period, but I'm gonna chalk it up to like we're on a provincial island in the middle of nowhere. Now that we have food storage, I wanted to put the gobo in there. And then I wanted to check the... So it says we... Where is this cook building that it says that I am apparently in possession of? Like, it allowed me to assign them to be a cook, but I don't see any other buildings around here that indicate that that's the truth. Hey, there we go. So now I can tell her to make meals, and we will have food for everybody. We also need beverages. So I think we're going to have to figure out the Bebidas situation. Uh, necesitamos Bebidas up in here. But we, we know Tenemos, dude. We know Tenemos. All right. They also wanted, they mentioned they wanted me to go talk to some guys. So I'm going to walk up like an axe-wielding maniac. Is that actually like... Oh, so the haft on it is longer than I thought. Gotcha. I was just taking a oh, I just thought about the fact that I didn't get to make my own character. Like, I didn't get to customize or anything. I want to be like a cool guy with a, be a bandit. Is that a gallows behind you? Yup. Did you come to pay your respects? I don't know who was hanging there. Uh, you must be a visitor. Welcome. Uh, this is the exact place where Injiro drew his last breath by the orders of the accursed Shiba Yama. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. I don't see a gallows anywhere, though. Everybody's like, everybody I can talk to in town is like, do you see a gallows? And I don't see a gallows anywhere. I'm supposed to talk to some people. They wanted me to go talk to, like, a warrior. They wanted me to go talk to, like, an unclean. And they wanted me to go talk to a priest. And I think that's kind of, like, where we're at right now. I was kind of thinking about it and, like, what does every self-respecting village need? I feel like it kind of needs a well. It looks like I can only do, like, a little well for right now. But I do feel like this is a very strong decision. Now, I don't know with this shrine here. Like, I wanted this to be, like, the town center with everything kind of facing it and, like, a road going off that way. I don't know if, like, a well would be near a sacred ringing bell, though. Like, I don't know if that would be a thing that's, like, generally frowned upon. I'll tell you this. I built the city, so the well is going to be right near my house uh, so that it's not super annoying for me to get a drink of water. I feel like that's my right, Okay. Like, if I want the water source to be close to my house, guess what? I'm the one who's building everything. Everybody else here is just like, this guy has been standing around for like three days, all right? It's become clear very quickly why this village is in such a state of disarray. Everybody else here ain't doing nothing. I'm like the one guy with a work ethic around here. Well, that and Aiko, I guess. And like that, there's our well. So it looks like I actually need to have... People join. Apparently, they deliver the necessary resources. Be patient. Visit your workstation again to get the completed products. Uh-huh. So somebody has to, like, work here with the well in order to make that all function. I'm like, in theory, I'm okay with that, but we still need to go meet the warrior, the monk, and the unclean. Let me see if I can track that down. But this is probably, like, a good time for me to give you guys my thoughts about the game. Uh, honestly, with where the game's at right now, it's on the earlier end of early access, all right? People on the forums are saying 7 to 10 hours worth of content before you've, like, built all the stuff. I can't verify that. It would probably take me longer because I like to do things slow and meander around and do all the civics projects and whatnot. But the way I see it is there was a couple things that popped out to me that I was not a giant fan of. A lot of things here, actually, more or less, copied straight from Medieval Dynasty. Pickup animations, the way that everything functions has mostly been facsimiled over. So if you were okay with the earliest early access of Medieval Dynasty, you'll probably be okay here. But a couple of things that I noticed is that performance is sketchy. Uh, during the recording of this video, I had lots of chunkies and I had lots of frame drops. That cleared up a little bit when I updated my graphics drivers, but I'm still in the testing process of seeing if it smoothed everything out completely. It seems to have helped, but there are still chuggies here and there. There's also kind of like some slidiness to the character movement, like there's too much inertia, or there's like too much physics to the slow up and the speed down 
of your character when you're moving around the map. And I also felt a little bit of weird latency with the mouse, actually. Like, when I would turn left really fast, it was almost like I would move the mouse, then it would happen on screen in a perceptible, like... 20 to 30 millisecond like it's so hard to describe and I don't know if it's happening to everybody but it definitely happened to me and it took me a lot of getting used to I don't know if it's linked to the v-sync or like what's up with it but it was one of those things that when I first started playing I was like between the slidiness and that it felt kind of weird uh, there is no law enforcement system in this game you can just steal people's stuff and nobody seems to care you just rock up in people's houses and just, like, take all their things. I assume this is kind of like a tacit nod to JRPGs and, like, getting elixirs out of people's clocks. But, like, you know, it's one of those things where a law enforcement system would be nice. There's no voice acting. Uh, that would have been nice. The text thus far seems to be mostly utilitarian. Not super overly flowery. But otherwise, that was kind of my observation playing the game, I think, for an hour and a half before it edited down into this 30-minute video. Uh, performance issues, weird slidiness, and also like a weird type of mouse latency that I almost like couldn't get rid of that was really, really strange. Other than that, I really want to play it because I want an open world RPG that's set in Japan and Ghost of Tsushima isn't coming to PC for a while. And so like, I definitely love Medieval Dynasty. I don't know. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Hopefully this video helped you out. I bought this game out of pocket. This was not a press copy. I fell on the grenade so you wouldn't have to, and those are my honest first impressions. I will probably shelve it until later on in early access because it doesn't feel like it's quite there for me yet. I'm a big stickler for performance, but for other people, your mileage may vary. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But up until then, it is time for me to go. Take care, folks, and that's about all I've got.